Now, um, we've, all we've done from the previous question, right, is we've changed it from yearly to monthly. Okay? Now, what that means is for the numbers, there's going to be some significant differences. And it's a little bit like when we're doing integration, right? And uh, we give you something, and we say integrate, get a definite integral from A to B of some function, right? And then we say, and use this substitution, right? So we change it into, in terms of x's, uh, we change it to u's, right? You've seen that kind of question? So what you end up with is you're integrating a function of u with respect to u, right? Now when you do that, you can't just leave these limits as they were, right? You've got to change them to some other limits. Um, in terms of u instead of x, right? So same deal here, because I've changed everything um, to monthly instead of yearly, um, all of the, the details I supplied in the question, I've got to adjust so that they're in terms of what I'm trying to do now, okay? So I'm looking at this row here. Uh, instead of five years, I need to think about this as uh, 60 months, right? And in the same way, because the, um, because the interest is getting calculated more frequently, um, I shouldn't think about 15% per annum. Um, because it's monthly, I'm going to have to divide that by 12, because that's how much interest I'll get every month. Right? So 15% per annum, I think it works out to 1.25% um, per month. Okay? So these are going to be the bits and pieces that are going to go into our new um, series. Okay? So um, before we actually work out how much he's going to save, we're going to work out what the actual repayment is, because we don't know that. right? Um, that's, that's why I've circled everything that we've been trying to work out here, right? And this is sort of the blank. So how do you work out the repayment? And you've got to be careful here, there's a trap to fall into. <clears throat> In much the same way as we did the previous question, except all the numbers will be different, right? So we want uh, A60, the amount owing after 60 time periods, in this case, months, right? We want it to be equal to zero. So what's the expression for A60? Um, it's going to be a little different from what it was before, right? Um, A60 should be equal to the 50 grand that we started off borrowing, right? And because it sits there for 60 time periods, it's going to get 60 lots of interest applied to it, right? And that's why before it was 5 lots of interest. So 1.0125, sorry, that's a 0, to the power of 60. So that represents what you started with, right? And then you subtract your repayments. Now this is where the series comes in, do you remember? Uh, let's let our repayment be P. I don't know what it is yet. Um, and that's going to become a problem for us later on, as you'll see. Uh, it's going to be P times now. What, what goes into the series? What's in the series? Um, I think from memory, up on the top here, this is your R to the N minus 1. Right? Yeah, that's the sum. So this is our R. And our N is still 60, right? Minus 1. And then on your denominator, sorry, what's that doing there? Better. On the denominator, you've got r minus 1. Is that okay? So 0 0.0125. Does that check out so far? Is that okay? Can we see nods? Yes. Okay. And we want that to be equal to 0. Okay. So you rearrange a little bit, and we want, we want p, right? So I'm guessing I'll kick this 50,000 over to the other side. Um, and then this part is going to cross multiply, right? So I'll have the 0 0.0125 on the top, and I'll have the other part, 1, 2, 5, to the power of 60, on the bottom, okay? Now, what calculated value do you get for that? You get 1189.49. Okay, let's, let's get to something, something, something in this case, right? Uh, I think it's like 6, 5. I, I think that's enough. Okay, now, <clears throat> this is a really unusual example. I didn't anticipate this. I'm glad I came around and had a look at what was going on. Um, some of you will get to this point and you'll say, well, okay, my question is about over the life of the loan, right? So you'd say, okay, well, a reasonable assumption is you take that value and you multiply it by how many times he repays it, namely 60 times, okay? And that'll tell you how much he's paid over the life of the loan, okay? Um, but there's a problem with this, with doing this, because <clears throat> if I ended the question and said, what's his monthly repayment? How much does he have to pay every month? What would you conclude off this? What value would you actually pull out? You have to, um, you have to round, don't you? 
you'd say, uh, lightly, that the monthly rent would go 49 and it'd have to go up. It'd have to go up to 50 cents. Because if I ran it down to 49 cents, even if I was closer to 49 cents, I wouldn't actually finish the repayments. That little bit would catch me by the end. It'd still be ending, you know, owing like 7 cents by the end of the loan. Something ridiculous like that. Okay? So therefore, I have to say, I have to go up. This is how much he has to pay every month. Because, you know, if you go to a bank and say, I'm going to pay you 49.65 cents, they'll say, get lost. I'm going to take, you know, actual whole cents here, okay? So that's his actual repayment, okay? Now when I go to the life of the loan, this is what I multiply by 60, not this. Because I can't replay this 60 times, because there's weird bits over here which I can't actually pay, okay? But this I can pay 60 times, or Johnny, anyway, okay? Now, uh, you might think it doesn't make that much of a difference. Well, guess what? That 6.5 makes 20 cents difference, 20 cents, that's it, okay, because it, it's so small, all right? So, over the life of the loan, um, his total repayment, is um, this value times 60, someone got it on them, it's 70 something, isn't it? 70, 300 and, okay, and that's, no, no cents is there, it's just a zero cents, right? Okay, so there is how much he'll pay over the life of the loan with monthly repayments. If I want to work out how much he'd pay, um, I suppose I can put this in by the way. If he did this, you multiply this by 5, right? Uh, multiply it by 5 and yearly total. What's that yearly total? Anyone got it there? 70, it must be 74 or something, isn't it? He's got it. Do I have to get it? I got somewhere here. Uh, 578. Okay, so now we've actually got, gotten all of the pieces together and I can, I can work out what the saving is, right? This is about three grand, okay? Okay, so that was a good example of a question because um, there's lots of little things to fall into and there's lots of actual steps to go through before you can actually answer the question at all, which I haven't really done, but it's just a subtraction, so I don't think it's that complicated. Okay, now, have you finished that question? Come back to your table, right? Um, we've asked a lot of questions of poor Johnny and his, um, and his time payments, but there's one glaring question that's missing um, because, as you know, we've been sort of looking at different quantities and trying to solve for different quantities. Uh, you know, for example, here with the interest rate, I've deliberately left that off, okay, because it leads to a question which you can't, it's sort of insoluble without some weird methods you don't know yet, okay. So what does that leave? Uh, it leaves that amount over on the left, right? Suppose Johnny says, look, okay, um, three grand is actually not that much of a saving, if, even if I pay my plan, okay. So this is not a, this is not a good idea, I can't do it. Um, I've still just got, I've still just got five years. And I can make a repayment of 10 grand, okay? And he decides that the um, three monthly is not worth the effort, so he just goes with back to the annual plan. Um, he has some care for, you know, his, um, his descendants after him, so he doesn't want to leave a debt behind. So he does actually want to repay it, uh, and he's still stuck with this 15% interest rate, okay? So the logical question is, well, if that's how much he can repay, and this is how much time he has got left, well, how much can he really borrow? Like, what amount can he actually borrow and be able to repay uh, in that time? Okay. So let your borrowed amount be B dollars. And give it a go. This is our last question of Johnny, and then we'll let him <clears throat> rest in peace. Um, see if you can work out how much you can actually repay.